Hey, Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. And in today's video, we're gonna go over three must-dos for outfielders. We've got one must-do before each pitch, one must-do during each pitch, and then one must-do once the ball has actually hit your way. So I really think you're gonna find a lot of value in this video. Let's head on out to the outfield and get straight into it. All right, so the very first must do, this is something that you need to do pre-pitch, something that you need to do before every single pitch. And you need to know if the ball is hit to you, where is the throw? Now, as a general rule of thumb, I want you to throw two bases ahead of the lead runner, okay? So, for example, let's say that you're playing wherever in the outfield and there's nobody on base, all right? If there's a ground ball base hit to you, just a routine play, the, the throw would be hitting your cutoff man uh, and you're throwing towards second base, right? If there's a runner on first base, then that would change. Two bases ahead of that lead runner would be throwing to third base. And then if there's a runner, the lead runner at second base, then the play traditionally would be at home plate, all right? So this is something that you need to be thinking about every single time because the worst thing that can happen is the ball hits your way and you not knowing what you're going to be doing with that ball okay so before each and every single pitch just look where is the lead runner okay where is the throw going okay runners on first and second base the throw is going to the plate all right now there's one caveat to this and you always need to be listening to your infielders and listening to your catcher because let's say there's runners on first and second but the ball is pretty much crushed in the gap. Chances are, you know, if it's hit behind you guys and you're running for a while to get it, chances are you're not going to get that guy at the plate, right? He's already going to score. And so then chances are maybe the play is going to be at third base, right? Maybe, um, you know, instead of maybe then you'll have to go three bases ahead instead of two bases ahead. So the biggest thing is just always be sure that you're listening to your cutoff men, listening to your catcher. But just know the general rule of thumb two bases ahead. So think about that. That's a must do before every single pitch. All right, let's jump into the next must do. This one is actually during the pitch. This is really going to help you see the baseball a lot better. This is something that I was not taught uh, until really way too late. And this is something that I think a lot of younger players may not even know about. So as an outfielder, right, a lot of players, when they're getting into their ready position, the pitcher has a sign, he's going into his delivery. A lot of players try to watch the baseball from the pitcher's hand. So they watch him do his complete arm circle, and then when he throws to the plate, they try to pick up the ball out of his window, right, out of his hand, similar to if they were hitting, and then they try to attract that ball from his hand to the hitting zone. Now the problem with that is the ball's gonna go from his hand to the hitting zone, and then boom, quickly off the bat. So it's almost like your eyes are just darting all over the place. It's very hard to track the ball like that. So don't follow the ball, okay? What you need to do is you need to get into your ready position and you need to be looking in the hitting zone, not trying to track the ball, okay? So use your peripheral vision, all right? And, and you'll get the hang of it, work on it if you do live batting practice on the field but look into the hitting zone as you're getting ready and you're gonna see the pitch being thrown all right but then it's gonna be much easier to track the ball once it's actually hit off the bat because your eyes aren't darting all over the place they're fixed on one location and then boom the balls hit you're gonna be able to see it off the bat much much easier you're gonna get better jumps on the ball and you're gonna be able to track more balls down that maybe you wouldn't get to if you lose them off the bat, right? I, I lost a lot of balls off the bat uh, when I was younger because I was constantly trying to watch the ball out of the pitcher's hand. And when I made this one shift, it made a big time difference, okay? So try that out. It's a must do during the pitch. Just instead of trying to track the ball, focus on the hitting zone and then pick up the ball as it kind of crosses the plate. And the very last must do as an outfielder, this one is when the ball has actually been hit to you. So let's say you're fielding the ground ball, fielding a fly ball, and then coming to make a throw. Keep your throws down, all right? This is one of the most frustrating things I can tell you from uh, you know, your coach's perspective when they see outfielders missing their cutoff men and airmailing their throws, all right? The problem is with an airmailed throw, when you, when you miss your cutoff man, a lot of guys think, oh, I'm gonna show off my arm strength and get it there in the air, but what they end up doing is basically throwing a giant lob, right? And the problem with that is kind of twofold. Number one, it's probably not gonna be very accurate. It's probably not gonna have much of a 
velocity on it, even though you think that you're really, you know, sending it all the way and uh, you think that it's a strong throw, chances are it's not going to be as strong as a nice low throw that it has a nice long hop that continues to kind of gain velocity as it goes. Um, and so it's not going to have much velocity on those airmail throws, but the biggest reason is you can't cut it off. You can't redirect that throw. That's why there's cutoff, man, not only to help you with distance wise and actually getting the throw all the way there, but what about if something changes and the catcher has to say, you know, cut two. Let's say you're throwing to the plate. You want that guy to be able to catch the ball, the infielder, and redirect the throw. And the worst thing is when you airmail and sail it over that cutoff, man, and then it completely eliminates any opportunity for him to redirect the throw. And worst part of all, it probably allows a runner to advance and it does not keep the double play in order. Keeping the double play in order, especially as you get older, the double play is one of the most important plays in baseball. You have to always keep the double play in order whenever possible and you have to hit your cutoff men in order to do that. All right. So keep your throws down. Another easy thing to remember is throw through your cutoff man. Throw about a foot over his head, you know, um, where when he has his hands up like this, it's easy for him to let the ball go or or redirect it if possible. So look about a foot above his hat, but throw through him. A lot of younger guys just try to throw to him. So they try to throw a lob to him and then it's mandatory for him to catch it and, and make a throw uh, to the base or to home or whatever, okay? So what you wanna do instead, instead of just throwing it to him, is you wanna have a strong throw that's throwing through him that will get to your final destination on a long hop or no hop, um, if at all possible. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Apply these must do's into your game. I promise you, you're going to be a better outfielder because of them. All right. Last thing before you go, I want you to grab my free bat speed boosters workout. As we all know, you know, outfield is just one phase of the game. You want to be a great hitter, right? You want to hit for, you know, power and be able to crush doubles and home runs over the fence. This bat speed workout is going to be a great step for you to improve that bat speed and that power. So it's 100% free to grab it. Underneath this video, go to the comment section, click on the first link in that first comment. I'm gonna pin that link right there for you, easy to find. Just click on that link and then you'll be, you'll be taken to a page where I just need your email address. That way I know where to send that free Bat Speed Boosters workout. So go ahead and do that right now. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that. And if you're not, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're coming out with new videos every single week. I don't want you to miss any of them. So subscribe to our channel, turn your notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.